It's extremely grueling. We always say that we're, we stretch you to the point where we can see all your, your holes. The Joint Readiness Training Center rotation is like a cricket uh, bat in the face over and over again. What's up, right? I'm Sean Grescheck, and I'm joining the Welsh Cavalry as they spend 12 days in what's known as the Box a feared training area that's being used to test troops to their limits for decades. Yeah. Give me rapid and then we'll go round. We need to go forward, yeah? Yeah. Uh, we need a medic across the road! Inside the box, one of the most right. feared training areas in the US Army. Let's go, let's go! And troops are in the thick of it, being tested over and over again. Yeah, and tracking through the terrain, the Welsh cavalry. Position clear, position clear, let's go. Who are in the midst of one of the biggest military exercises taking place in the world this year. This is a joint training readiness centre for the Americans. So they come through it to validate uh, how good a commander they are in each of their echelons, different formations, from mm. the lowest to the highest. How well can you execute on what is a quite a difficult terrain? One big one, one big one. You'll do, you'll do. Hey! Against an uh, enemy that does this day in, day out, every month. Go on, guys, you're looping crown. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So far, based on the, the short period of time that we've been out here, uh, they've been doing very well. Uh, they have very good discipline. Um, they're maintaining quiet and uh, security at all times. And uh, they're really working through the speed bumps in the process with ease. And that's very impressive. Hello, I'm Zara, but this is one Alpha, now assaulting Integral Fast Fort. The Welsh cavalry are advancing on enemy positions where a fierce gunfight is underway. Contact! They're facing various threats, including green figures with wooden rifles. They're static but full when hit, and they've successfully taken all of them out. Enemy suppressed for the minute, they're not moving. What we're testing is the um, interoperability of slotting in somebody at company sized within an American battle group, within an American brigade, within an American div, and say, how well can you execute having not met these people before? Um, moving with very little equipment. What you're doing is plugging in the man and saying, uh, how well can we perform? And when it comes to performance, the Welsh Cavalry are getting the chance to use something usually reserved for special forces. So the soldiers are particularly chuffed about the fact that they finally had these Razor vehicles delivered. They were meant to be inserted via Chinook a few days ago, uh, but it's actually radically going to change the way they will be able to do resupply over the next few days in terms of getting that crucial water supply to the guys and they don't normally get to use these vehicles. They are a game changer for us. Uh, just water, water consumption out here is, is through the roof. We're kind of consuming up to about 10 litres a day per man and we just can't carry that. So the more you carry, the more water you need to consume. Predominantly used by uh, their special forces, but it's, they're now starting to roll them up to the, the wider army. However, the utilisation of them has, hasn't been quite figured out yet, so we're kind of trial running for 389 CAV, how we're going to operate. So basically, you've got the driver and commander uh, stations in there. It's exactly the same as a, a civilian uh, ATV, so you've got automatic uh, drive, uh, accelerator brake, like a little go-kart when, you when you're cutting across the open ground. And then the panic bar for the, for the, for the, for the, uh, for the commander, when we start getting a bit airborne and start going a bit faster on corners, so it's got a nice little grip there. Um, and then also the back seats, so predominantly where we'd use the back seats is for either kit carriage as we do in now, or if we do take any casualties, we can then extract this kit out, put injured personnel in real time or exercise play, strap them in and then ex extract them off the battlefield. I'm not going to lie, 
by that was a lot of fun but it's only when you get in there and you actually cross the terrain here which is incredibly tough that you see why they're so excited about getting to use it on this exercise because crossing this this type of ground going through the swamps etc that's what's difficult and that's why it's so important in terms of resupply uh, for the guys on the ground but things don't always go to plan this razor found a ditch that caused a few issues but that's the nature of exercises anything can happen and the show must go on Meanwhile, support to the battle group from the air is vital. Apaches, Chinooks and Blackhawks, many based at Fort Drum in New York, have joined the exercise. And tonight, they're gearing up for a big air assault. We've been granted special behind-the-scenes access to see their preparations up close. We're going to insert uh, Charlie 389, which is start of, part of 3rd BCT, uh, 10th Mountain, so some of their reconnaissance forces, and the Welsh Cavalry. We're going to take them behind enemy lines under night vision goggles. Both for the ground force and for us, it, it's, it's, it's a big moment. So individual pilot skills goes a long way into doing something like this, because you have to count and know what the other, for tonight, nine aircraft are doing as we're flying a tight formation uh, under goggles, zero loom. It's nearly time. Final checks are made. Dozens are involved in making sure these aircraft get off the ground. We've got Apaches, Chinook, Blackhawks, they're all going to be working in formation as part of one of the biggest air assaults of this exercise. There's only one word for it. And with that, they're off, providing support from the air, but also adding yet another level of complexity to this massive exercise and moving troops behind enemy lines. And while we're not joining them tonight, we've been given an incredible chance to experience an Apache up close. Join me next time when I make history and am the first British journalist to be granted a flight in an Apache by the US Army and flown by one of their top guns. Sean Grescheck, Forces News, Alexandria Airport, Louisiana. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.